Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. That was very nice of you. I just, I, was, I nearly went like that there. I had to stop myself. <laughs> Do you know? What? This. Uh, when that happens to you live and you're not an American, it's the best laxative known to man. <laughs> it happened to me in the bottom line, a club in New York, and the audience went, Ooh, I thought, shit, they're coming to get me. <laughs> Will I tell you something? This, <laughs> I will be telling you several things as the night, <laughs> as the night wears merrily forward. But I've got a lot to say. And, uh, and it comes out kind of, sometimes it comes out kind of in the wrong order. Please, please don't worry about this. I personally couldn't give a fuck. So, <laughs> so don't, don't let it get you down. There's a bit of profanity, but I like that. And I'm rather good at it too. So there's nothing worse than somebody who can't swear trying to do it, you know. Like some posh English guy going, oh, you fucking bastard. <laughs> you know, because it's supposed to be violent, you know. I personally just use it like commas and exclamation marks. <laughs> Gives the thing a bit of funk, you know, a bit of shape about it, you know, lumpiness. But, you know, you know, fuck, I don't explain it, but... But, you know, if you, if you, if you, fuck, 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 it's kind of staccato, fuck, 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 and it's got its own sort of rhythm, do, da, do, da, do, fuck, fuck, do, 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 fuck, fuck. I'm trying to describe, because I don't really resemble anyone that you'll know, so I'm trying to set you up here, right? Because this is weird, because this is for television, right? Uh, the HBO. I say this with great aplomb. See, watch me, great confidence. This is for HBO. As if, as if I knew what HBO was, right? <laughs> HBO, he says. HBO, you know. I haven't a fucking clue what HBO is. <laughs> right. It's a, it's a wee box on your telly. So we box and people say, what's that box in your telly, Bill? HBO! <laughs> I don't know, the cable goes into the wall and I'm fucking if I know what happens after that. <laughs> Have you got cable? Oh, yes! Where does the cable go? Bugger the final! <laughs> I have absolutely no right, I'll tell you. Now, this is the truth I'm going to tell you here. The 20th century seems to have caught me unawares. I have a video machine that shows films to itself and won't let me fucking see them. <laughs> it's a selfish bastard. <laughs> I've a good mind to throw it out, but I think it might have something up its fucking sleeve. <laughs> I can't even set the time on the bastard. I've tried. <laughs> And I, I can tape things. Not always the thing I wanted, I'm sure. I'm sure it tapes things that it wants to see itself, the bastard. I've always been suspicious of it anyway. How does it fucking do that? How does it know? How does it know which channel? At what time? It goes, I mean, can you imagine a video at home saying, oh, well time to switch on and tape the fucking program. <laughs> I don't like the idea of it being in there on its own, going through the drawers and looking at stuff. <laughs> no, call me a sentimental old fool. I don't fucking like it. <laughs> I'm sure it has parties with other fucking VCRs. Give it. Watching fucking films that it won't let me, because you, you tape stuff, programs for the t <laughs> Right. And you come home, you switch it on, and it's got it. You know, and it, it goes, all oh, business-like noises. And there's a, there's a thrill for me when it, when it grabs the, the box, the, the thing, and takes it, I go, oh! <laughs> the light's on, it's fucking working. <laughs> 
my daughter, see, she's, she knows about digital stuff. I've got Roman numerals on my fucking watch. She, she goes, oh, don't be silly. <laughs> and it was right, I was like, bitch, right? <laughs> and she goes to a boarding school, right? So she went away back to school. While she was there, there was a power cut. <laughs> we call it a power outage, don't you? <laughs> outage. That's a good word, outage. Fuck. So. <laughs> Give me a piece. So, there was a... <laughs> maybe, maybe your power goes out. Maybe it's a bit overload and ours gets cut by fuckwits with tractors and bulldozers. <laughs> maybe, maybe there's a difference. Oh, I've cut your fucking power. <laughs> you know, some tattooed fuckwit Neanderthal. <laughs> oh, fucking <laughs> nice, you know, to be in America because it's the weirdest place on earth. And I must say it really appeals to me. It's the only place I've ever been in where there were so many people as fucking mad as me. There's a 24-hour drive-in taxidermist. You really need that, I feel. That's a must. Turning up with dead cats at three o'clock in the morning. It's bizarre. I mean, that, uh, that's the town I want to live in. You know what I mean? And you buy the house and they say, it's on the fault line, you know. I'll buy it. Give me the fucking thing. <laughs> we're right on the San Andreas. Fucking, that bank comes, we're right into the valley. Oh, how much is that? <laughs> how many million did you say? Wrap it up. I'll fucking take it away just now. It's, it's an extraordinary my house. If there's a slightest rumble, buff, I'm in Ventura fucking Boulevard watching the telly. It's... <laughs> <laughs> I was in an earthquake before. I was here. I was watching telly and I had the weirdest feeling. It was like an elevator going down quickly. You know that? <laughs> You know that, like, your, your liver has just passed your Adam's apple. <laughs> Anyhow, this feeling went whoop, and I thought, F -f -f what was that? And at the time, I had been indulging in various mind-expanding substances. <laughs> it's the stuff called McEwen's Export. It's a Scottish <laughs> beer. <laughs> so I just thought, oh, that's just my hangover. But it happened again, but this time, it was about an hour later. Whew, I'm still watching TV, and there was a Chinese-American woman uh, on the news, and she was reading the news, and when it went, whoo, to me, she went, what was that? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. <laughs> it's the truth. I just heard it coming out of my mouth. <laughs> now, I, I meant to explain to you, just because some people come and see me, and they find me to be a major irritant. <laughs> you know, that's my style. They, some people like my comedy, but they hate my style. And I say, fuck them, we laugh at them. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, <laughs> the thing is, I, I have a lot of uh, ideas sometimes, and sometimes none. And some, sometimes I trundle through stuff I've said a million times before, and then suddenly something will come in and say, talk about me, talk about me, talk about me, or I'll fucking go away. <laughs> and so I have to talk about it instantly, or it goes away, and it fucking infuriates me. It usually comes back, but sometimes that's like next April. <laughs> you know? And so all these ideas are all here, and they go round and round and round. And, and I thought I was mentally ill at one point. And I went and asked some Buddhists in fucking Lockerbie of all places. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> that's, that's Lockerbie in deaf and dumb language. So, the, <laughs> and, <laughs> there's a Tibetan monastery there. It's called Sami Ling, and these Tibetan Buddhists are very, very nice. If you're ever in Scotland, you must go and see it. 
And she, no, really, you would love it. You would, you'd like it. How dare you speak when I'm on? Do you know who I am? I'm in show business. We laugh at hecklers. Ha ha! No. There is, and it's gold, it's stunning. So you, you drive through Scotland and all these shepherds, meh, meh, come here, you wee beauty. <laughs> oh, I love you, come here, meh. Don't run away, say hasty, you wee beauty. <laughs> right, oh, I've got nothing against that. I'm an open-minded person. <laughs> In Scotland, they would have you believe we invented that sheep stuff, and it's <laughs> probably true, I would imagine. Probably true. Yeah. In Scotland, they say, if you're going to shag a sheep, take it to the edge of a mountain so as it pushes back better. <laughs> so the... Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Didn't you know that? Meh, meh. Oh, I love you when you talk dirty, you wee beauty. <laughs> You come round the corner. Gold, it's gold. It's, you must go. I went there and I asked them about this stuff going round my head, and they said, "Enjoy it. Sit back and enjoy it. Watch it like a train going past." So that's what I now do. I watch my freaking brain going past, <laughs> and now I know I'm mentally ill, and I'm much better for it. So this stuff goes round, and I. To explain it to you, it's, it's choosing what to talk about. Like you, it comes by like that. And the merry-go-round in a park is the best way to describe it. You know those merry-go-rounds that you push? It's got like banisters into the center and a, a round bit at the base. And uh, <laughs> your father would take you to the park and put you on it. It's a kind of vomiting machine, really. <laughs> You're supposed to enjoy it. I fucking hated it all my life. And uh, on you go and enjoy yourself. You know. <laughs> Scotland's like that, you know. Violent. Maybe not anymore. I mean, it used to be, when I was a child, Scotland was a violent place. And uh, if parents were all being violent to their children, all my friends, their parents too. Biff, take that, yeah, fucker. <laughs> Bush. <laughs> it was the done thing. It was like fucking folk dancing in Scotland. Step to your father, whack it, whack it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See that move? You think he goes skiing, that boy? No stranger to Big Bear, him. No. That was behind a couch avoiding my father. Whenever I'd done something, which was most days, my aunt would say, get into that room and wait till your father comes home. <laughs> and he would come home. Where's the bastard? <laughs> He's in there. And he'd come into the room. Come here. And usually I just went over. And he would beat the shit out of me and that would be that. But I remember one night, I don't know what happened inside my brain, but I heard my, my mouth going, no. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> Come here. Oh. <laughs> right. I'll just have to go and fucking get you then, won't I? And he came up to the couch, and I was behind it, and I made the mistake of my life. I went like that. <laughs> and of course, he would go, right, yep, yeah. and I would go. Like that. Two minutes, he was fucked. He was on his knees. <laughs> Steam coming out of his ears. His face is purple. Don't think I'm tired, boy. <laughs> There's phlegm coming out of his ass. This guy was knackered. He just couldn't take it anymore. He went, right, you bastard! Came right through the couch. Splintered wood and cushions everywhere. Grabbed my wrist, held me up the way the angler holds a fish up for the photograph. 
And I was bent like that, trying to get my arse as far away from his hand as I could. And he would swing at me. That's a thing they do in Scotland. They hit you in the rhythm of the argument. Don't you ever let me see you doing that again. Isn't the world a weird, but isn't America weird? I was out on my thing. They, somebody told me today what it's called. I was calling it a veranda for a while. And then I, I took to calling it a platform. Somebody informed me today that it's called a something else. A perch or some fucking thing. A deck! A deck. <laughs> I was... <laughs> fucking perch. <laughs> I was... <laughs> I was reading, uh, what's it called again? You'll never have lunch in this town again. Uh, I was, and you know, somebody gave me it and said, there's the lowdown in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. So I read it and I got the lowdown, but I don't know anybody. So I've got the filthy lowdown and people I don't know. <laughs> so I got myself a Scottish tan while I was doing it. You don't see bodybuilders like that, do you? <laughs> it's um, <laughs> America's first head and arm transplant. <laughs> I love it. That's a Scottish time. That's the way we all come back from holidays. <laughs> And you're on your fourth fucking nose. Hello, how you doing? See, what you must understand about Scottish people, well, you don't must understand, but I'm going to tell you anyway, is that we are not white. We are not. I, I hear people on television saying, well, we as black people resent the fact that you white people, well, I'm not a white person. I am, a, a, I'm fucking pale blue. <laughs> and the Irish tend to be pink, I find. <laughs> they run to the pinkish. We are more your powder blue. <laughs> so I was on my thing, my pad, perch, thing, deck, deck. I, it was, and I, I was thinking about the Iraq, the desert thing. It was, it was extraordinary, wasn't it? I watched it every day. And four weeks I hadn't seen a fucking band-aid yet, you know. There was bombs flying in all directions, especially those ones where it said, now watch the bomb here. Here we go. Right, then it goes, it's gonna go through the second window on the left. <laughs> what? Whoosh, fucking building powder. I thought, yeah, well done. Yeah. Smart bombs. There was two things come out of that war for me. Smart bombs and friendly fire. <laughs> the guy who shoots, he's got a big fucking smile on his face. <laughs> friendly fire. Hey, Willie, how's it going? Bang. Hey, nice to see you. Have a good ass. Bang, you fucker. Right. <laughs> What's friendly fire? How dare they? Collateral damage. Friendly, <laughs> friendly fire. It's a, you see, it's such a consolation when you're on the stretcher and your balls are missing. <laughs> Do you know it was a friend of yours who did it? <laughs> Smart bombs, I, I couldn't believe it. You know, it's like, it's like a nightmare, it's like a comedy scenario, you know, what a, a smart bomb goes in the second window left. It's like, bombagram, you're watching television. Oh, <laughs> uh, who is it? Bombagram! <laughs> but now, how did I get to that now? Let me start properly. My, yes, oh, I was going to tell you about my father beating me up. 
anyway, my daughter, I'll come back to that. My daughter went back to school and the power outage happened. The power cut. The guy with the tattoos and the fucking thing, boom, poof, house in darkness. The comeuppance was the power came back on, but the fucking time had gone from the VCR. It was once again a row of turquoise zeros flashing. And I couldn't fucking fix it. And she goes to boarding school. The bastards wouldn't let her come home to fix the fucking thing. <laughs> fucking snobs, I hate them. No, she can't come home. How dare you? Oh, bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know the way I've got it to stop it? I've, I've piled tapes in front of it. <laughs> I went to the pictures a few weeks ago. I, I love going to the pictures here. Got the movies, it's brilliant. You can park your car and all, and you get fucking ice cream with nuts on it. <laughs> oh, I've died and gone to heaven, and all these great movies. I love, saw Awakenings eh, with, you know, De Niro and Robin Williams, and I loved every second of it. And then I got my newspaper from England. I read The Independent, and it, occasionally it's sent to me. And there was a review of the film, which was very, very odd. I must tell you this. It said, while I enjoyed this film immensely, it would have been 10 times better had it stuck to the true story. And it, according to them, this man, this critic, who seemed terribly well informed, he said, as they all do, he said, he said, the real story is they were given, didn't they, for those of you who have never seen the film, they, these people are sort of in bed, uh, veg, but vegetables, people, uh, you know, comatose. Right. <laughs> British conservatives, you know. <laughs> They've got, you know, and they give them this drug and they all come to life and fall in love and dance and have jolly times. And then it sort of becomes regressive and they go back to the state and it's a very sad affair. Well, according to this critic, he, they administered the drug L-Dopa, which made me laugh, L-Dopa. <laughs> I thought that was slang for fucking marijuana from Mexico. Hey, hello, we're going to L-Dopa. Oh, the free Mexican Air Force is flying tonight. <laughs> Yippee, I think I'm an orange. I think I'll jump out the fucking window. No, it was... I could never cope with drugs, you know. Some people think I'm a junkie, but I'm actually this old. I, I've never, I've never managed to grasp the point of drugs. It's always totally obliterated me. So like anything, you know, here, yeah, try this, fucking great shoe. Fucked! <laughs> you know, in the 60s, I used to have a five cent a day habit. <laughs> Puff, fucked! <laughs> Especially that American, did we make these skinny joints? Here, try that. I've fucking gone! <laughs> and I always admired people who could take it and go and do things. I could fucking... <laughs> <laughs> I remember being in bed with the most beautiful woman. She was an extraordinary person. God, I sometimes think about her. She fucked off and left me, of course. She said, I've got some great stuff. I thought, yes! I mean, the war was over, the battle had been won, we were in bed, for Christ's sake. I'd been nice, we'd been changed, she came to the concert, we had dinner, it was lovely. She said, yeah, let's go to bed. I said, what a fucking good idea. <laughs> there we were, and she said, hang on, I've got the most amazing stuff. I said, oh, good. <laughs> Always happy to be part of the game. You know, I'd hear, like, there's the fucking beard, right, let's go. She went, here. <laughs> I was like one of them fucking Egyptian statues. I'm like, she goes, you okay? <laughs> I remember thinking, God, it would be lovely to touch her. <laughs> Get over there, you fucker! She got up and went away, I was lying on. Help me! Help me! <laughs> that was me till the morning. It happened twice, another time in Dundee. She vomited on me! <laughs> I 
I was talking about awakenings, Robert De Niro. <laughs> Williams. According to this critic, who seems to know more than most people, the true story was they administered the L-Dopa. That's where I lost the track, right? <laughs> L-Dopa Grande. <laughs> they administered, apparently, they administered the drug in real life to, to the, the, the fellow. And he did wake up, but he masturbated his life away. <laughs> he just went for it every... every Fucking waking moment, Ooh, right? <laughs> Which would have made a rather short movie, I think. You know? <laughs> and now back to Robert De Niro. <laughs> He'd never have taken the part. He'd never have done it. How are you doing, Robert? Oh, fuck. <laughs> right. And you know how he's one of the method guys. He goes and lives it first. <laughs> It'd be a shadow of his former self <sighs> in some fucking toilet in Central Park. What's he doing? Oh, he's rehearsing. Leave him alone. <laughs> See, mas masturbation. It's, it's such an extraordinary thing. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. It was, it was invented with the poor in mind, I think, masturbation. You know, you can always have a... Look, I've never known anyone who was prepared to tell the truth about masturbation. Do you? No, fuck it. Me? Fuck off. Never. No. What? How dare you? I haven't done it since I was four. <laughs> e if, if indeed I did it then, which I very much doubt. I wouldn't even touch it when I'm having a piss. I use one of them things they use in cake shops. Come on, right? <laughs> this part of the show is a guide to more fulfilling masturbation. <laughs> now, I know you're highly unlikely to masturbate, any of you, because you look like decent types to me. <laughs> but you may be watching TV. You may be watching Santa Barbara or something. Or one of those soap things, right? You know the ones in the morning that are made for the hard of thinking, right? <laughs> you know, where people talk when there's nobody in the room. They talk to telephones. Oh, Bob, please phone. Where the fuck are you talking to, Mrs? <laughs> and they talk to letters. They pick up the mail and go, please be from Charlie. The fuck? <laughs> Read the fucking thing. <laughs> I get, oh, I get so angry. But anyway, you may be watching that and you go, oh, these people are rich and famous. I've lost the will to live. <laughs> I think I'll go and jump off a fucking bridge somewhere. I'll jump in front of some traffic. That's what I'll do. On the other hand, I could have a quick wank. <laughs> that would cheer me up no end. Because that's the way it comes into because the devil finds work for idle hands. <laughs> see, I see this as missionary work, you see? <laughs> now, the most awful thing that can happen while you're masturbating isn't being caught, although that is awful. Being caught in mid-masturb is. <laughs> now, it's extremely difficult to find a good excuse for what you're doing. <laughs> Tonight, I am going to give you that excuse. <laughs> this could improve the rest of your life no end. <laughs> now, you must be quick with the excuse. So, you're in mid-master. Master, master, master. Oh, and the word wank, I must explain that. I don't know where it comes from. I've asked many, many people. My personal theory is it's those army beds. You know those metal beds you get in the army with springs on it? And I think that's because that's the noise they make, isn't it? <laughs> I have
traveled the highways and byways of this planet. I have never met a bed that goes, Master Pete, Master Pete, Master Pete. <laughs> so, so you're in mid master and the door bursts open and it's your nosy brother. Are you, <laughs> you don't let him finish the sentence. Don't let him complete. Don't give him the joy, the satisfaction. Of, when he goes, what the fuck? Come in immediately with, thank God you're here. <laughs> well, that... <laughs> well, that deeply upsets them, right? Thank God. I'm... That's a three steps back shock that I'm amazed. Thank God I'm here. What does he mean? I thought he was having a wink. <laughs> Thank God you're here! And not a minute too soon! <laughs> really? Well, it was the fucking story. Would... You'll never believe this! No, probably not. <laughs> I was... I was walking across the bloody room there when the biggest fucking hairy spider you ever saw ran out from underneath it. I thought, fucking hell was that? Huge bugger, the size of a soup plate, legs like this fucking thing here, came scalping towards me and right up the leg of my trousers. I thought, Jesus Christ, it's the way up the leg of my trousers. And you probably remember, only last week I was reading that book, remember? Hey, what, what book was that? <laughs> Tarantulas and their wily ways. No. You, you, you mentioned it. You said, what the fuck are you reading that for? I remember. It said in the book, it said, there's nothing tarantulas love more than to sink their teeth into people's testicles. Ooh. And I, <laughs> I thought, that's what the bugger's up to. It's a way up the leg of my trousers to sink the teeth into the family jewels. Before you could say Jack Robinson, I whipped the tweeds down, and not a second too soon, it was up like that. <laughs> the bastard, look at people like that. <laughs> Just as you walked in the door, and I was going, get the fuck out of there, you! <laughs> Jesus. So where was it today? There was the condom thing on. Because everybody's gone condom crazy. And it's, see, when I was growing up, condoms were kind of dirty things that dirty people used. If I find one of them on you, my boy, you'll just leave this house. <laughs> if ever one of them falls out your pocket. I had these fucking spring-loaded pockets in my house. <laughs> my mother kept finding things that fell out my fucking pocket. Things that were sewn in, <laughs> pop out when she was walking past. <laughs> if I ever find anything that's fallen out of your pocket, any of the dirty things you will get a dirty. <laughs> but they were regarded as rather slithery, horrible things that slithery, horrible people used. And there was, a, and you, you either brought them in the barbers from kind of smelly barbers, or something for the weekend. <laughs> that was the line from the barber: something for the weekend, sir. Because British people only screw on a Saturday. <laughs> it's desperate, isn't it? The British were regarded as pretty bad lovers. I don't think that's particularly true. But in literature, it's, it's odd, you know, and in movies. And what was it? Brief encounters. But they never get down to it. They never go, yes! You're just dying for him. You go, oh, come here, get the knickers off and let's fucking do it here! Let's do it in front of the fucking train! Let's die! Let's die doing it! Fuck it! But no, that's it. Thank you, darling. It's been a wonderful, wonderful time. And I love you, I love you, I love you. Fucking give her one! Ah! Right. See, dogs know, dogs know how to do it. Dogs don't take prisoners. They fucking know that they're fucking wiser than us. You never, you never, see, you never see a dog going up to another dog and saying, what's your sign? They don't fuck about. <laughs> Come here. Right. 
female dog. Tick, 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 tick. The day arrives. <whistles> male dog. Woof. <laughs> female dog, thanks very much. <laughs> Anywhere. Crossroads. Traffic. Me, me, me. Fuck off. <laughs> And they like it. You know, you never get dogs writing into magazines. I have trouble achieving orgasm. <laughs> I have trouble getting an erection. Wham! Well! <laughs> well, where the fuck are you? Ah! Yes! <laughs> and the legs going. The back's arched, arches and oh yes! The eyes are fucking rolling back. Ah, turn for the... They know! And they share it! Come on, lads! Oh. It's a big, fucking looks like a big hairy igloo. There's about 50 of them fucking, oh, fucking their brains out. <laughs> That's my ear! That's my fucking... I don't give a fuck! The bitch left 20 minutes ago. They don't give a shit. <laughs> oh, God. I'll never forget. I used to... I was in various bands, you know. I used to be a musician. I started as a folk singer, playing the banjo and stuff. Folk music, the folk revival, the folk scene was bizarre. There's all these people in pubs singing about mining disasters. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good night out, you know. <laughs> Fucking lifeboat tragedies. <laughs> I'll never forget that awful night in 1894. <laughs> 700 sailors dead upon the floor. <laughs> Join in, come on, have a good time. Fucking dead, dead they were, dead as fucking stone. <laughs> we're all dead, you know, that's why we're alone. <laughs> oh, he's dead, he's dead, everybody, he's dead, he's fucking dead, dead as fucking stone. <laughs> 700 children were murdered in their beds. More! More! OK, 729 were murdered. It's a weird time. I bought a lovely badge in San Francisco. It says, if I had a hammer, there'd be no more folk singers. <laughs> in the luxurious position of being a teenager when rock and roll was invented. And it was for us. I'm 48, you know, and I was about 14, I think, when Bill Haley did Rock Around the Clock. And I thought, fuck, you know. <laughs> and Buddy Holly. Oh, yeah, it was like getting out of jail. Yes, that's for me! Yes, I'm alive! And your parents didn't understand it. What's that fucking noise? Turn that fucking din down. It's mine! It's fucking mine! And you're all bastards! And the whole world changed. And it was brilliant. I walked off a loom up, a lot, bam, boom. I fucking understood that. I thought I... <laughs> Tutti frutti. Oh, fuck. Because previous, it was a nightmare. They would bring records home. I'm a pink toothbrush. You're a blue toothbrush. Have we met somewhere before? Well, I'm a blue toothbrush. And to be true, toothbrush, I think we met by the bathroom door. <laughs> it was like being in a fucking mental hospital. <laughs> oh, she wears red feathers and a hooly hooly skirt. That was before. Da, 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 da. What the fuck's that? <laughs> oh, Jesus. But then, in rock and roll, there's weird as well. I've never understood a whiter shade of pale. 
People say, oh, it's a fucking classic. I think it's a pile of pretentious shit myself. It's... As for MacArthur Park, give me a fucking break. Somebody left your cake out in the rain, fuck off. I don't like beaches. I've never liked the beach. Hated it all my fucking life. I, there's something, I, I think it was being Scottish that did it. We have beaches, but they're extraordinarily uncomfortable places. Because I remember Aberdeen, northeast of Scotland, the North Sea laps up on the shores of Aberdeen. It's actually the Arctic Ocean. It goes through a little name change as it comes down past Iceland. It veers right and becomes the Atlantic left and it's the fucking North Sea. Doesn't kid me any. A hundred miles out to sea, there are oil rigs drilling for oil. And there's guys, an announcement's been made. Wear a survival suit at all times. You must wear a survival suit. You wouldn't last more than two minutes in that water. Hundred miles away, there's mothers taking their children's clothes off. Get in there! In you go! <laughs> See, I'm married to an Australian person, and she's all beachy too. Let's go to the beach. I can't imagine anything more fucking awful than going to a beach and getting sand up your ass. <laughs> and Aberdeen was my, I told you about. I was on holiday with the school. We all. Today we're going swimming, boys! Oh, fuck, no. <laughs> Let's hear it for a good swim. Oh, fucking hooray. <laughs> and off we went to the beach with this Mr. Hegarty, a known pervert of this parish, watching the boys. Oh, fucking, if I was your age. And we all had those terrible... Now, there was none of your speedo swimming lycra jobs. You know, one of these costumes, second skin, fucking zipping through the water nonsense. Big woolly fuckers up to here. <laughs> with a belt on them and a pocket for some fucking inexplicable purpose. <laughs> and a white belt, you know. And they were like knitted cotton. They were big lumpy fit things, big dark blue jobs. And run down, you'd go in the water, they would grow. <laughs> Twelve times their normal fucking size. Before you come out, you'd have to gather them all up. Dragging you to the fucking bottom, you know. You, come, you walk out and the crutch is here. People could look in and see you, Willie, if they were really lucky. In the North Sea, it was about that fucking thing. Yeah. Willie. Bing, 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 bing. We're the least sexy tourists in the world. Scottish, a wee fucking thing like this. <laughs> and then you're older, you go abroad to the Caribbean, Mediterranean, you see these guys walking around. Fucking thing like that. <laughs> Got a baby's arm hanging out a fucking cram. Teacher hated me. Conley, smart ass, into the sea. Oh, fuck, eh? Yeah. Oh, fucking good. Hey, hey, this year, hey. Complain, complain. Get in that fucking water. I took my trousers off. These horrible pants. Pale blue person. <laughs> Heading for the sea, the fish are going, fuck that. <laughs> What the fuck's the pale blue thing coming? Run. <laughs> I 
pale blue thing with the tiniest willy you've ever seen in your fucking life. They must have weird sexual organs probably in that fucking pocket thing. <laughs> and the friends, your so-called school friends are going, oh, go on, Bill, on you go. Uh, thanks very much. <laughs> I will never forget it as long as I live. My feet went in the water. <laughs> I heard my body, I heard this noise. Do you know, have you ever had a real fright, you know, like... I mean, a serious fright, like maybe uh, in the jungle or something, where, where a big hairy thing is going, rawr, you f ah! and you, you f it's happened to me, and you hear, or if you're in a, a war situation and somebody shoots at you, and you, you, you hear your body going, oh! no, it's, <laughs> it's not like, fucking hell, help, it's not like that at all, you know, like the movies, Ah, it's not like that. It's a weird noise from deep, deep in your psyche. Something that's printed in your DNA from fucking centuries ago. It's oh, <laughs> something when you lived up a fucking tree. Oh, <laughs> it's the weirdest noise you'll ever hear. I'll tell you what. Have you ever heard a boiled potato being shoved up a donkey's ass? It's exactly the same noise. <laughs> this, the coldness of this water was beyond pain into some other realm of fucking torture. <laughs> And I look back, and all those bastards are going, Go further in! Go on, you big fucking Nancy boy! <laughs> I went further in, up to my knees, lost the will to live. Couldn't, <laughs> couldn't move another muscle. <laughs> oh. And I look back, and they were all laughing and pointing. I thought, what are they fucking pointing at? Billy, look, look! Oh no! There was a speedboat! This bastard on a speedboat! Shh! Across there, and a wave came! Ooh, this other noise! This other noise appeared from here somewhere! I could feel the boiling potato! I could see this wave inexorably slipping towards me. I look back there and go, I will never, as long as my arse looks south, I will never, ever forget it. That wave coming up the inside of my thighs and kissing the bottom of my scrotum. <laughs> I it's lovely I like this and it's lovely living here in America and uh, it's lovely do you know that this my stuff is accepted because I all my life I've laughed at awful things and and I've always I felt a bit strange I, when I was in my teens, I felt all right about it because all my friends were the same, you know. They would say, oh, fuck, Bill, you should have been here yesterday. Fucking laugh. <laughs> I thought I was going to fucking hurt myself. <laughs> we were out in Willie's car. He got a puncture. We got the jack out like that. The fucking thing broke and fell in his hand. <laughs> oh, fuck, I thought I was going to hurt Three of us lifted the front of the car. His fucking finger fell off. <laughs> I couldn't look. I couldn't fucking look. I had to go and tell his mother. I could hardly fucking speak. <laughs> but look, it's, uh, it's it's been a pleasure talking to you. You're very nice people. 
Um, try and think of something nice to say to you. <laughs> so, those of you who have enjoyed the show, tonight, when you go home, you'll tell the babysitter, she'll say, how was the show? And you'll say, what oh, was good? I laughed, I fucking laughed. <laughs> Oh, you'll be at work tomorrow. I'll say, did we, out, did we out last night? Oh, I went to see that Billy Connolly. I fucking laughed. <laughs> My face was sore. I, f I tell you, I was sitting there and I thought my cheeks feel very sore. What had happened? My teeth had got dry and my lip had stuck up. <laughs> and, but those fucking wedding pictures. <laughs> and... <laughs> It was, was he good? Oh, fucking laugh. What did he say? I've no fucking idea. <laughs> it's... It would seem to be the sort of uh, comedy version of Chinese food that kind of goes away. <laughs> And all you're left with is a desire to say fuck all the time. <laughs> Which can get you in terrible trouble. And you'll try and control yourself, but you'll find, you know, a taxi, oh, fuck you! Oh, <laughs> but uh, if it's any consolation, it does go away, just relax. You're basically very good people. And it does eventually disappear. Thanks for your company, I've enjoyed you immensely. And good night. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. The show is over. Fuck off. Terrific, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Fuck. Hi. It's great to be here in the Brooklyn Academy of Music, I think. I was in, uh, I was in Brooklyn today and I nearly shit my fucking trousers. <laughs> This is, this is dangerous. People shouldn't fuck about here. I am a Scottish person. I can't fucking wait to get to Scotland. You frighten me shitless. Look, really, it's, it's, it's really, it's brilliant. It's just the best place. But you know, they could, they could make, they could make it even better. You see, Los Angeles does this Hollywood Boulevard thing, which is a con, I think. You know, stars on the pavement. And, Every fourth one, you never heard of the fucking guy. <laughs> Harry McPherson. Hey, New York should do it. They should do it different. They should have, don't have stars in the street. Have big splat marks where people have jumped off the fucking buildings. <laughs> and, put, and put the names in it. Of where guys have been shot. You know, when you get shot, they put sticky tape round your body. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have that shape on the street. Joe Bananas. Oh, fucking great. On hairdresser's floor for that. <laughs> That's what you should do. Don't wait for those bastards to show you the way. I came here in Concord today. And I arrived before I fucking left. <laughs> it's weird. Concord. Sitting there with your fucking life jacket on. <laughs> Heading upside down for the fucking Atlantic Ocean. I'm all right. <laughs> Fuck off. Because if they were to tell you the truth, <laughs> now there's 
one. The fucking life jacket drill. Now you put your life jacket on over your head. <laughs> and then go again. And it says on it, put your head through the fucking hole. <laughs> Pass the tapes twice around your body and tie in a double bow. <laughs> At the side. Right, so the plane's upside down and on fire. A spill of fucking smoke and you're plunging towards the ocean. There's people going, how'd you do a double bow? There's people running about naked going, yeah! Year, I, I was the last year I was doing comic relief, the British one, and uh, we, we had to go to Mozambique. I had to go. Other guys went other places, you know. <laughs> Lenny Henry went to Sudan or some fucking place. Other guys went to other. It's fucking disturbing. We went to. I went to Mozambique, and I flew from London Airport, Air France, to Maputo, right. I was desperate for somebody to ask me where I was going, you know. <laughs> where are you going? Maputo. <laughs> Where's that? No fucking idea. <laughs> just, just so exo I just wanted to be exotic for a while, you know, Maputo. <laughs> Air France, whoosh! Down to Maputo, it was fine. Did the bit, all that awful stuff. Horrible film, you know horrible things happening to extremely nice people. It's just the same old fucking story. We could do it. No, I'm not, I'm not. Right. I'm just do my bit. Then the following day, we have to go to a place called Gili, which is away in the far north, a refugee camp, 100,000 people living in dire straits. We have to go up and film them. Now, I don't like those little Buddy Holly aeroplanes. <laughs> I like the aeroplanes that go. <laughs> They've got toilets and cups of tea. Another biscuit, Mr. Connolly. <laughs> That's flying. I don't like. <clears throat> And I like two pilots, in case one fucking dies. People die all the time, it's just that you're not around, you know. One of those funny averagey things, you know, people are flopping all over the fucking place. You see funerals, you don't know the guy. Could be a fucking pilot. <laughs> and he never tells you. When there's only one, he never says, look, I might die here. If I do. This makes it go left and right, <laughs> up and down. And these foot ones make it go wah, wah, right. Now, it would be a wee bit of use because you may be able to stay up until it fucking ran out of petrol. Maybe you could bring it down a wee bit and, you know, be maimed instead of fucking dead. <laughs> but they know that, the selfish bastards, they know. They prefer to die, and with a dying breath, they go, Gee, fuck it all! <laughs> well, we're, go <laughs> we're going to. I just kicked the microphone. We're going to, to the airport to go to Gili, to this terrible place. Lovely people, but a fucking awful place. <laughs> Down, we're, in a, we're in the back of a truck feeling very exotic. <laughs> You know, big crowds of people think they're a hero, you know. Wally. <laughs> Didn't they have... <laughs> and there's a big Hercules aeroplane, huge big bugger. And I went, oh, it's a Hercules. I've been in one of these before, you know. Shh, round behind it, and there's this wee fucking red aeroplane. You could smell the glue drying on the wing. <laughs> They've obviously assembled it from a kit that morning. <laughs> It was fucking awful, right? We're sitting in it, we're all sweating, waiting for the pilot. We're not frightened, it's really hot. We're all sitting, hair's wet. 
For some reason, all the heat goes to your crutch in an aeroplane. <laughs> the open windows are... <laughs> sitting in his puddle. <laughs> It's true, you got all stuck. Right. We're trying to be nice to one another. And this guy arrives, this fucking thing. And he's got a t shirt, you know. And khaki shorts, big shorts, and flip flop sandals, those thong fucking things. Hi, I'm Reg, I'm the pilot. <laughs> I said, fuck off, Reg. <laughs> no, the man took umbrage. He says, why? I said, go and get men's clothes on, Reg. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, times may change, but standards must remain. <laughs> Your pilot should have long trousers, right? <laughs> Fucking long trousers. Dark blue, maybe black, but long trousers. A white shirt with half sleeves, a packet of ciggies showing through one of the epaulettes. Hairy arms and a moustache. <laughs> a piloty looking man, right? Preferably called Nigel Carruthers. <laughs> right. see, when, see, when Nigel comes on, when you're in the aeroplane, sitting there, you've just got on, you've buckled up your safety belt. Hello, this is your captain speaking, Nigel Carruthers. I think, oh, fuck, I think I'll have a sleep. It's Nigel. <laughs> Isn't that terribly British idea? Nigel, king of the sky. <laughs> oh, there's an interesting cloud formation. Let's go over and have a look. <laughs> Nigel's clean and nice. Nigel's never asleep at the wheel, smoking dope, scratching his box. None of that. <laughs> Nigel's bollocks have never been itchy in his entire life. He's never had the necessity to go at that. Nigel never scratches his buttocks. <laughs> Nigel is upper class, and the upper class don't get itchy arses. <laughs> Only the working class get itchy arses. Isn't that extraordinary? You never see the Queen going like that. <laughs> right. Never. <laughs> never. Even if she was itchy, she wouldn't let you know. She'd go, go away, itchy ass. <laughs> Would fuck off, it would be terrified. It's just one of those things, I hate it. Now, when I say itchy ass, I don't mean ass, I mean... <laughs> the one that's so far up, you could get it that way. <laughs> you don't know how to... Like, even when you've got the finger... You've got, you, all you're doing is ramming your Levi's up your ass, you're trying to get it. So you debate, you won't do it. And you, it never happens at home. You never ever have this at home. <laughs> your ass just ambles merrily forward at home, being sort of arsish. It, it never does it. But when you're in a busy street, a pedestrian precinct, everybody's like, very well, him. <laughs> you do anything but ram your hand in. You go, oh. <laughs> Masturbation's a good idea. <laughs> I've always been a big fan of masturbation. <laughs> I was about nine, I think, nine or ten-ish, around there, when I first did it. It was wonderful. <laughs> there was a guy in my class at school. Now, there was, he was probably in your class, too. <laughs> a sort of international fuckwit. Big high forehead, hair in the palms of his hands. Those guys who were tattooed when they were five. <laughs> Pubic hair before everybody else. <laughs> he sat beside me at school and he said, Have you done it yet? <laughs> what? They call, they call it wanking in Britain. <laughs> wanking. <laughs> Having a wank. <laughs> They call it jerking off here, don't they? <laughs> it's very violent, now. <laughs> oh, 
You're supposed to be kind to yourself. You don't go fucking... Got him jerked off! <laughs> Jim, Jim. <laughs> It's not good for you, that kind of thing. He said, have you done it yet? I said, what? Wanking. I said, what's that? <laughs> oh, you must have. I said, how He said, it's brilliant. You get your willy in between your finger and your thumb. <laughs> I was only nine for fuck's sake. <laughs> Like this now, I mean, <laughs> shit, it's fucking vast. You can probably see it from the <laughs> He said, and you jiggle it up and down like this. <laughs> I said, why? <laughs> Because it's brilliant! <laughs> no, what's brilliant about that? <laughs> it's brilliant when you finish. When you stop eventually. It's fucking brilliant. So I said, okay. <laughs> because a thing happens, he says, at the very end, it goes, oh, fuck it off. <laughs> Just your tongue completely Japanese. <laughs> Well, that'll do me. So when school was over, we went behind the bicycle place and we did it together. <laughs> and pounding away there. And he was right. It was absolutely brilliant. I must say, we both went, oh, at, oh, yes. And when it was all over, he said, now look, you must remember, you only get a hundred of these. <laughs> for your whole life. You've had one. So you've only got 99 left. He said, keep a notebook and keep score. You must remember because if you do over 100, you fucking drop dead. With your willy in your hand. And your mother gets deeply embarrassed because you can't get the lid on the fucking coffin. And everybody knows what you've been doing. The neighborhood also, look at the I can see the lid there. <laughs> <laughs> and they frightened the life out of me. And do you know, I don't, as a matter of fact, I don't think I've ever been so frightened as the hundred and first time. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most frightened I've ever been. It was the following afternoon. <laughs> And all that. But my whole, my body has given me desperate trouble all my life. I even tried, like vomiting has given me terrible problems. <laughs> now, I, I vomit, it's awful. Now, but I've known men who can vomit casually. <laughs> Have you ever seen those guys drink a lot of beer? You see them go along the street and they go, Bleh! The cyclist, Sean Kelly, in the Tour de France, they said, you looked in pain in the time trials. He said, I was okay after I vomited. <laughs> what? <laughs> now, I can't do that. When I'm going to vomit, I think I'm going to die. <laughs> Anytime I drank, I ended up in the bathroom, kneeling on the floor, hanging on. <laughs> The, the toilet that is. But it didn't just go, VOMIT! Like that, although I, I, your vomit doesn't go like, VOMIT. It would be good if it did. And if farts went, fart. <laughs> you know, instead of going, <laughs> fart. <laughs> Why should it be such an awful smell? That's another design fault. 
we're supposed to fart, we should have a chimney or something, should we? <laughs> yes, I'm the same myself. But we'll pretend we'll have. I forgot to say, who did that? And, and you can see people walking out of cocktail parties. They know they're going to fart, so they're trying to walk with their ass closed. <laughs> But they usually get caught, because instead of going and then blaming it on something, it goes <laughs> And even then, if it was just or anything like that, you'd be okay, but there's all sorts of varieties. The worst of all, the killer diller is That's the silent killer. <laughs> I was on a plane going to Australia once, and we stopped at Singapore, and a, and a man got on and sat beside me. I will never forget this as long as I live. He sat, I was at the aisle, and he, it was a first class, there was only two seats. He sat there, and he knew me from, he'd seen me someplace before. Are you Billy Connick? Yes, I am. How are you doing? Yeah, fine. He said, I'm just in from Hong Kong. I said, oh, really? He said, and I've, I've just flown Cathay Pacific. Have you ever flown with them before? No, I haven't. I often intended to. They're fucking brilliant. Really? Absolutely. First class. I said, that's nice. The food was unbelievable. Really? Yes. What did you have? He said, on the flight, he told me, Barbecued goose with soy sauce, ginger, and spring onions. He said it was fucking brilliant. He said, I'm glad to hear it. Whereupon he went to sleep and he curled up in a ball like a squirrel. And we took off, whoosh, into the night through the clouds. We hurtled up into the sky, whoosh, and we settled down. And we're trundling along, and this man farted. <laughs> I will never forget it, as long as I live. Not only was it the worst fart, it was the longest. <laughs> Maybe it was the position he was in, he squeezed his ass all up. But he was kind of leaning over and his ass was pointing up towards me. And it, and it made the strangest noise. It was like cloth tearing. Did you ever see a movie with Errol Flynn? Where he was a pirate and he had a knife in his teeth. And he dived from one, the mast of a big sailing ship. He dived with this, oh, well, not quite. <laughs> he wasn't one for diving like this. <laughs> but he, he took a lunge at this other billowing sail. And he, just, he stuck his knife in it to stop himself. And it sort of slid down the sail with the knife. <laughs> well, that noise. <laughs> is the exact noise his fart made. It was a kind of tortured noise. It was a kind of... <laughs> and then he changed position. With a sort of flourish. With a sort of. <laughs> but while the. <laughs> was going on, people were looking back. <laughs> and of course they couldn't see him, he was all curled up. <laughs> and my hair was blowing up with this. These fuckers thought I was farting out of my left ear. <laughs> and then the smell came. <laughs> and for 
first I couldn't believe it. I thought, I thought fuck, the plane's on fire. My eyes were burning. <laughs> and the paint was all changing colour. I thought, for Christ's sake, don't inhale, you'll get cancer. I had to leave. I had to leave. But you know, see that ozone fucking stuff? It's now that the bastard, they know something that we don't. There's fucking, there's people know a thing. No, laugh, that's right, fucking laugh. Remember who fucking told you this? There's big holes in the sky. Everybody going, oh, it's terrible, and it's all heating up, and it's a greenhouse effect, and the fucking, not to mention the fucking rainforest. <laughs> Burning coal, fucking acid rain, fucking big hole in the sky, right? All of a sudden, in the middle of all this, Poland, who had defended its fucking frontiers with missiles, its fucking bristling with armaments, guns, and fucking steel helmets, don't come fucking near me. They say, four guys demonstrate with fucking anoraks. <laughs> and they say, okay, the country's yours, have it. <laughs> right. Hungary. People in t-shirts and fucking Levi's. We want change. Okay, you got it. Sure. <laughs> Lithuania. We want that fucking have it. <laughs> Czechoslovakia. Ah, fucking here you go. <laughs> East Germany. Here, have it. Here, has a hammer. Knock the fucking wall down. <laughs> They know something, those fuckers. <laughs> Don't let those two fucking Germanys get together, they bastards, or you will get used to this fucking noise. <laughs> Followed by this noise. Open the fucking door! <laughs> A bunch of bastards. They're all practicing just now. <laughs> Kurt Waldheim suddenly remembers what he was doing in 1942. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, it's all coming back now. <laughs> That's the year I learned the banjo. There's, there's something fucking wrong over there. There's something, something in the garden. Fucking stink. Somebody's vomited in the petunias. I don't like it. It's that thing I was telling you about vomiting. Vomiting should be easy. What? You should be cycling. Or what? You should be jogging. Go. What? It should be that casual. How come? And I don't know how many of you are like this. When I drink, I have to go to the bathroom, hang on to the toilet, and all the sick goes. What? And it's easy at first. What? What? And there's an American expression for it about selling a Buick, isn't there? Will you buy my Buick? <laughs> buy my Buick! <laughs> in, in Britain, it's called shouting for Huey. <laughs> Huey! <laughs> Huey! <laughs> and these words just come out. You don't want them to. It's, it's this involuntary noise. <laughs> and it comes out your nose. It's really... <laughs> and there's always diced carrots in it. <laughs> now, I have never, to my knowledge, eaten diced carrots in my fucking life. <laughs> and I'm not very big on tomato skins either. <laughs> I can't remember ever going to a restaurant and saying, I'll have a plate of diced carrot and tomato skins. <laughs> Every time I sick, there the fuck is that? <laughs> it's really odd, that, isn't it? And they come charging down your mouth, out your ears, out your eyes, <laughs> out the ends of your hair, your head explodes. <laughs> and then this awful thing happens. All of the sick comes out and goes away. It's all out, but your body won't recognise that. <laughs> It wants to be sick more. It's enjoying itself. So it goes. 
tries to escape. It comes out to here. And then the most awful thing happens. This terrifying shudder comes. So you go. But the worst has yet to come. <laughs> the veins are all standing out on your forehead. <laughs> and the third time. <laughs> oh, the strain of it all. You whip your trousers down. <laughs> As soon as you do, you vomit into your pants. <laughs> it's been an extraordinary pleasure, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen.